Hello, my name is Shahryar Shahryari, and this is a lecture in a series of lectures on introductory combinatorics based on my book, An Invitation to Combinatorics. The subject of this lecture is the Sterling numbers of the first kind and falling factorials. Let's get started. Um, so let, let me tell you what, what we're going to cover in this lecture. Uh, look at the polynomial x times x minus 1 times x minus 2. If you expand that correctly, you get 2x minus 3x squared uh, plus x cubed. Uh, now do x times x minus 1 times x minus 2 times x minus 3. These are called falling factorials, and you get these other numbers. And you continue, and you get certain number of a sequence of coefficients. Now try doing what we call rising factorials, x times x plus 1 times x plus 2. Somewhat surprisingly, you actually get the same coefficient as you did when you did x times x minus 1 times x minus 2, except there's some plus and minuses uh, that are different. Let's continue with that. If, if we do the next one, we see the same pattern again. And so our, actually our question is that, what are these coefficients? Where do they come from? So what I'm gonna cover in this lecture is I'm gonna remind you what Sterling numbers of the first kind are. I have a whole video on that, and I urge you to watch that before watching this, although I will remind you of all necessary things in this video as well. Um, I will give you a recurrence relation for them, and then we will talk about falling and rising factorials. And, and then we will prove that the coefficients that appear here are indeed the Sterling numbers of the first kind. Now, the Sterling numbers of the first kind is something that's defined combinatorially, but it comes up when you multiply these things. This, these, uh, this fact will be useful in our next video when we want to uh, look at the relationship between the Sterling numbers of the first kind and Sterling numbers of the second kind, whatever those things are. Okay, so let's first let remind you what Sterling numbers of the first kind are. You have two non-negative integers, n and k, and then a Sterling of the first kind denoted n brac k, n bracket k, um, is the number of ways that you can seat n people around k identical non-empty circular tables. So you have k tables, they're all round, and you have n people that want to sit around those, and how many different ways can you seat those people? Now, the actual seats don't matter, but what do ma does matter is the relative relation of anyone with everyone else. Who are you sitting next to? Who are you sitting across from? Who are you sitting, sitting to the left of you and so forth? That's what matters. It doesn't really matter which seat um, you are going to done, sit on. Now, alternatively, n brac k is the number of permutations of a set with n elements, one through n, uh, that can be written as a product of k disjoint cycles. This is the way we would want to think about it in abstract algebra, for example. So we have permutations, um, and each one of those permutations you can write as, as disjoint cycles. Each one of those cycles is really sitting people around a round table. How many permutations of n, uh, when you write them as per product of disjoint cycles, have k cycles? And of course, those k cycles are going to be non-empty. Now, um, either by, by proper interpretation or by, by fiat, uh, 0 bracket 0 is defined to be 1. By the way, I'll also... Um, sometimes we add a negative sign, as we saw in those coefficients. When we multiply n brac k by minus 1 to n plus k, that's called a signed Sterling number of the first kind. Different people have different notation for it. The notation I will use for it is little s of n of k. Okay, works when we have a combinatorial function, like for example, n brac k. Uh, maybe we can find a formula for it. In the case of n brac k, we can't quite find a nice little formula for it. Um, and instead, what we do is we, we find it useful to find a recurrence relation. This was in the previous video, but I'm quickly going to tell you what the recurrence relation for the Sterling numbers of the first kind are. So n and k are positive integers, and I want to see what n brac k is equal to. And I will do a thought experiment. I will say that I have n people that I want to seat around k and k round tables. And, uh, and I want no empty tables. Now, one of these people is Javad. And Javad is going to arrive late. And I have two choices. Either there's an empty table. Because I don't want any empty tables, then I, Javad will have to sit at that table. Or there's not. Or all the tables are already taken. And Javad will have to sit at a table that's already taken. Um, another way of saying that is that either Javad is sitting alone or or, or he's not, or he's joining a, a another table. So now if Javad was going to be alone, well, he's going to sit at that one empty table. Uh, how many ways can I arrange everybody else? Well, there's n minus one people and they're going to be sitting around k minus one non-empty tables. And that the number of ways of doing that by our definition is n minus one brac k minus one. So that covers all the cases where Javad is sitting alone. Now, if Javad is not sitting alone, um, then, then how, how many ways can we seat n people around k tables with Javad not sitting alone? Um, so, well, first we seat everybody else, but this time they have to sit around 
K non-empty tables and minus one brack K. Now Javad arrives late. Now we have to decide where he, Javad, is going to sit. And what we're going to say is that, well, there's N minus one people sitting. Go, we can pick any one person and tell Javad, go to sit to the left of that person. So there's N minus one choices for that. So the total number of ways of uh, seating uh, Javad, if he's not going to be alone, is N minus one times N minus one brack K. And so the sum of these two got to be N brack K. And so N brack K is N minus one brack K minus one plus N minus one n minus one brack k. And this is the recurrence relation um, that allows us to use earlier cases, smaller cases, to generate larger numbers and a pretty efficient way of doing so. And doing that, we can get um, small values of uh, these Sterling numbers of the first kind. Okay, now let's not talk about falling factorials. So if k is a non-negative integer, um, parentheses x sub k, the k falling factorial function, is defined as follows, is x times x minus one times x minus two times x minus k plus one. There's k factors there. Um, x is the first factor, x minus one is the second factor, x minus two is the third factor, and the k factor is x minus k minus one, which is x minus k plus one. And, 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 and this is how this is defined if k is greater or equal to one. And if k is zero, then parentheses x zero or, or the following factorial x zero, is defined to be one. Um, so for example, if instead of X, you plug in N and instead of K, you put N also, then you get the factorial function. This is starting with X and, and doing a truncated factorial, stopping after K terms. Okay. And uh, we can multiply these out and we can see what they are. And we can say that the coefficients are actually, if you compare to the uh, table that I showed you, are in fact signed Sterling numbers of the first kind. They are the Sterling numbers of the first kind, but some of them have minus one and, 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 and it's minus one times N plus K to um, uh, N brack K. But why that? Why is that? That's what we want to prove. And to be able to prove that, we have to take a detour to rising factorials that are, that are defined similarly. So if K is non-negative integer and X and indeterminate, then X raised to the power K. There's other notation, by the way, for these rising and falling factorials. I'm not going to be using rising factorials that much other than in this video, but falling factorials is something that uh, I use quite often. And so these guys are defined similarly. Um, the the kth rising factorial is x times x plus one plus x plus two, times x plus two all the way till x plus k minus one. And again, there's k terms. The last one is x plus k minus one because we started with x plus zero. And again, um, uh, if k is zero, then the right the zeroth rising factorial is defined to be one. And we can find these, and these are actually. Um, we, we can multiply these out and see exactly uh, how, how these functions multiply out. And the coefficients are, in fact, this, there's no signs here, are the Sterling numbers of the first kind. And, and that's what we want to prove. And the way we want to prove that is by showing that the coefficient here have the same initial values and the same recurrence relation as the Sterling numbers of the first kind. And then they have to be the same. If they start from the same place and then they follow the same rule that, and you use the same rule to generate all of them going forward, then they're going to be the same all the way along. Okay, so now the state, the statement that we want to prove and then prove it. So n a non-negative integer, um, n bracket k, I'm just reminding you, is the number of permutations of one through n that can be written as a product of k disjoint cycles. And um, uh, the rising factorial is defined, as I just said, x times x plus one times x plus two, all the way till x plus k minus one. Given that, the theorem that we want to prove is that for n a non-negative integer, the, the nth rising uh, factorial function is, is expanded in this way, you will get a polynomial of degree n, and the coefficients will be uh, the Sterling numbers of the first kind. Okay, and and again, um, uh, both zero bracket zero and and the rising factor, the zeroth rising factorial are defined to be one, and and that makes if n is zero, that makes the this equation true for the, for for that reason already. Okay, so what's our strategy of proof? I, I said this already. I'll remind you. So. Um, we want to prove that uh, the right nth rising factorial is given by um, the sum with the coefficients being uh, Sterling numbers of the first kind. And our proof strategy is to write this thing and say that, okay, we multiply this out. I don't know what the coefficients are. I'm hoping that they're Sterling numbers of the first kind, but I reserve judgment right at the beginning. I don't know what they are. So I'm going to call them BNKs. So the coefficient of X to the K is going to be BNK, BN comma zero plus BN 
one X plus B and two X squared all the way till B and X N, whatever it is, I can write it like that. And then I want to show you that uh, these coefficients are indeed um, Sterling numbers of the first kind. And, and we will show that these have the same initial values. They start the same way and they satisfy the same recurrence relations. Now, let's see, for n equals zero in here, uh, the only way that b n zero will be non-zero, all of these have, a, have, a, have x, they don't have a constant term, unless um, k is zero. If k is zero, then we have defined uh, the uh, rising n uh, zero th factorial function as one, and therefore then b zero, b zero, zero will be one. And that's the same for uh, the BRAC, uh, the BRAC, the BRAC numbers, the Sterling numbers of the first kind. So for n equals zero, uh, they 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 are the same. If n is not zero, is greater than zero, but k is zero. Again, both of them will be zero. Both b n comma zero as well as n BRAC zero will be zero, and so they will be the same. So so for n equals zero or k equals zero, b n k and uh, the Sterling numbers of the first kind n BRAC k are the same. So these are our initial values. If n is zero or k is zero. Using those, we can generate all the other ones. Well, we can do that for Sterling numbers of the first kind because I already showed you the recurrence relation, but we want to show that uh, these b and k's, these coefficients also satisfy exactly the same recurrence relation. So, so now we have uh, our rising factorials, we have multiplied it out and we want to find a recurrence relation that, well, we're going to say that um, the nth rising factorial is really the n minus first rising factorial times one more term. You just have to, if you take this last term of the rising factorial off, you, you get the previous one. So you have x plus n minus one, which is the last term of the rising, the nth rising factorial times the n minus first rising factorial. But this n minus first rising factorial, you can also expand it in terms of these coefficients b and k. We don't know what they are. We're reserving judgment on what they are, but we know that any one of these rising factorials, including the n minus first one, is coefficients we have given the name of, of b, b and k. So for x, the n minus first one, the coefficient of uh, um, um, x to the n minus one will be b n minus one, n minus one, x to the n minus one. The coefficient of uh, um, x to the k will be b n minus one comma k, x to the k. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply this out. Well, I'm going to multiply actually just the x and the n minus one. So if you multiply x true, then everything, every power of x just raised by, by one. So now the coefficient of x to the n is n minus one. The coefficient of x to the n minus one is b n minus one, n minus two. And the coefficient of x to the k is b n minus one comma um, k minus one. Um, and then we have also the other term. We have n minus one times these things, which I don't need to multiply out. And then what I'm going to say is that, well, I was interested in b and k, which is the coefficient of xk in this rising n factorial. But I can also find this coefficient in this mess that I have down here. In fact, there are two terms. In this first top one, the coefficient of x to the n is b n minus one, n minus one. The coefficient of um, x to the n minus one is b n minus one, n minus two. And the coefficient of x to the k is b n minus one, comma k minus one. In this next one, the coefficient of x to the k is b n minus one, comma k but times an n minus one. And this is exactly the same recurrence relation that we had for Sterling numbers of the first kind. And so because we have, they have the same recurrence relation and the same initial conditions, they start the same place and then we can uh, calculate them exactly the same way using these recurrence relation, the two must be the same and our proof is complete. Now let's talk about the, um, the falling factorials, which is the thing that we really actually want. Um, so we have already proved that you expand the rising factorials, the coefficients are going to be Sterling numbers of the first kind. And now we want to look at the falling factorials. We want to introduce this notation for, for sine Sterling numbers of the first kind. I mean, multiply a minus one times n plus k to n bracket k. And uh, our theorem that we want to prove is that if n is a non-negative integer, then the nth falling factorial, uh, when you expand it, the coefficients will be exactly the sine Sterling numbers of the first kind. And, and again, note that if... Um, uh, S00, zero, zero, the sine Sterling number of the first kind, as well as the zeroth falling factorial are both one. And so if n is zero, this formula actually does work. And the theorem that I want to prove is that for n and not a negative integer, the falling, the nth falling factorial is coefficient that are given by these, these guys. And we have already proved that for the rising factorial, we get the Sterling number of numbers without the signs. Okay, so if n equals zero, I already pointed out that this works. So we want to know what happens for n greater than zero. Now for n greater than zero, 
I already know that the rising factorial, uh, the nth rising factorial expands using the Stirling numbers of the first kind. Then all I'm gonna do is replace x with minus x. This is true for every x, so instead of x, I'm just gonna put minus x. When I do that, I get a whole bunch of messy things, but all I, I'm going to do is, is factor out a minus sign from each one of these factors. Um, and, and that will give me um, a minus one uh, to the n over here. And then what's left is going to be my falling factorial. It's going to be x times x minus one times x minus two and so forth. So I just get a minus one to the n and I multiply by minus one to the n to bring it to the other side. Here, every term had a minus one to the k already. And so what I will get is that the falling factorial is equal to the sum of um, x to the k's, where the coefficient is the sine Stirling number of the uh, first kind, and the proof is complete. Now, let me just um, mention an example. So think of this polynomial x times x plus 1 times x plus 2 times x plus 3. Now, this is a, a rising uh, factorial. You start with x, and you're multiplying four factors. So that's x raised to the 4. But it's also, you can think of it as x plus 3, um, falling factorials, so starting with x plus 3, and you're coming down four things. So it's both of those. And, and what we got is that, um, on the one hand, when you think of it as uh, a rising factorial, you get the Stirling numbers of the first kind. When you think of it as a falling factorial, you also get uh, the Stirling numbers of the first kind, but this time signed. And also, these now these are x plus threes, not, not x's, because we are we are um, expanding x, x plus, starting with x plus three. Now, actually, we have this polynomial, and what we have in the first line is the Taylor polynomial, um, Taylor polynomial for that polynomial at x equals zero, which is going to be the same thing, but because it's a polynomial of degree four. And here we have the Taylor polynomial of degree four for that polynomial of degree four, but centered at x equals minus three. And it's sort of somewhat curious, maybe that the coefficients are the same, but it's not so if you look at actually the graph of that polynomial. And you see that at zero and minus three, um, the um, uh, smoothness properties, the, 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 the rate of change, the concavity, the derivative and so on, are all either the same or uh, negative of each other. Like for example, the slope at zero and minus three are negatives of each other, but the concavities are the same and, and so forth. Um, this was the end of this lecture. There's one more lecture on Stirling numbers. There is a total of six, uh, as, as of now, of uh, videos on Stirling numbers. Uh, the next one is the relationship between the Stirling numbers of the first kind and the second kind. Um, subscribe to my channel if you like to be subjected to videos like this and keep hydrated at all times. See you next time.